Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a GFCI outlet along with a protected outlet on the same circuit. For this purpose, I have purchased a Leviton Decora style tamper resistant slim GFCI outlet. GFCI has electronics inside which measures the current coming into the black hot wire with the current going back through the white neutral wire. If there is any difference, then that would mean there is some leakage of the current. In that case, the circuitry will cut off power to the outlet and subsequently any other outlets which are connected on the same circuit may also be shut off. That may happen if someone spills some sort of liquid into some appliance which is connected to the GFCI outlet and this may create short circuit. The GFCI outlet will immediately shut off power. If you have a series of normal outlets and a GFCI outlet and you notice that none of the outlets are working, then maybe the problem is that the GFCI has shot off power to the entire circuit. In that case, you might want to unplug any appliance or anything that is connected to the GFCI outlet and press the reset button. This may resolve the problem. This is an example. Neither the small night lamp is working on the GFCI outlet nor this normal outlet is working. None of these orange lights is on. Maybe this night lamp is causing some sort of current leakage. So remove that, press the reset button, the outlet is on now. Even this outlet is on now. And if you have two or three more outlets on the same circuit, they will also be on. This small indicator here should be green when there is power in the outlet. If this is off, that means there is some problem. Press the red reset button and it should be okay. You can also test any GFCI outlet by just pressing the test button. Off now, even this is off. Press the reset button again and the GFCI outlet will be on. Even the other outlets will also will start supplying power. This is an important caution. The procedure shown in this video is for information and education purposes only. If you are not comfortable working with electrical wiring or electrical equipment, I would strongly suggest that you hire a licensed electrician. Before undertaking any kind of electrical work, always make sure that you follow your local electrical safety code. You may notice that I am using a Leviton Slim GFCI for this demonstration. So these are detailed instructions showing how to connect the GFCI, where to connect the line and where to connect the load. One nice thing about this slim GFCI outlet is that its thickness is smaller than a normal GFCI outlet. So hopefully you can compare the thickness of these two, a normal GFCI and the slim GFCI. This is very helpful if you have an outlet box which does not have sufficient depth. If you look at the back side of this GFCI outlet, you will see some markings like line and there is a yellow strip that says that load should be connected here. This means we will connect the incoming hot wire on this side on this brass terminal and the incoming neutral wire on this side to this silver terminal. If we have to connect other outlets on the same circuit, those will be connected to these two screws which are under this yellow tape. Remove the tape and you will see load is marked over here. Any protected load. It may be a switch or it may be another outlet on the same circuit will be connected to these two terminals. The black hot wire to this brass terminal and the white neutral wire to this silver terminal. And the ground connection is done at the bottom on this terminal with green screw. This particular model of Leviton GFCI outlet is only temper resistant. It is not weather resistant because I don't see any WR marking over here. That means it can only be used on internal circuits. So we can use it in kitchen or bathroom or garage. This one is meant only for 15 ampere circuits. If the power line in the kitchen or anywhere is 20 ampere, this particular model cannot be used because this is made only for 15 ampere circuits. Let's take a look at a GFCI outlet and a normal outlet. The first obvious difference we can see, we have two buttons here, one red, the reset button and the other black is the test button. We don't have those two buttons over here. On the right side of these two outlets, we see the brass terminals. In a normal outlet, the two brass terminals are connected to each other with a brass strip. But in a GFCI, these are not connected. In a normal outlet, we can connect the black hot wire to any of these two terminals. But here, we connect it to the line terminal and that terminal is on top. The bottom terminal is for connecting additional outlets on the same circuit. 
on the left side in a normal outlet the two silver screws are connected to each other we can connect the white neutral wire to any of these two terminals but in a gfci the white incoming neutral wire is connected to the top terminal and the white neutral wire going to the next outlets on the same circuit is connected at the bottom normal outlet the green grounding screw is on the left side but in a gfci it is at the bottom side now this particular gfci outlet has line marked on top and load marked at bottom if you are replacing an older outlet you must check the line and load wires to make sure that you don't connect them in a wrong way some of the older gfci outlets had line at bottom and load at top so make sure there is no mistake for connecting the wires to this outlet we have two options we can make a loop like this and insert the wire under the screw and tighten the screw the second option is to strip the wire about half an inch slide it under the strip and tighten the screw i will use this method there is no hole in this outlet for backstabbing or inserting the wire or pushing in the wire into the outlet that is not a preferred method either next i will show you the connections this is the outlet box where i will be installing the gfci outlet and this is another outlet box where i will be installing a normal outlet i have marked this as in that means this 42 wire is bringing in power to this outlet box and this 42 wire goes to the next outlet we always start with making sure that there's no power in any of the wires i will use my client tools touchless voltage tester to make sure that there's no power in any of these wires there's no power so it is okay to proceed starting with the ground wires we have one ground wire from the outlet box one ground wire from the incoming 42 wire one ground wire from the 42 wire going to the next outlet box and i will use a small pigtail to connect the gfca outlet i will use a 5 pin vago lever nut connector to connect all these ground wires so these are my four ground wires i'll just keep one out and push all the others into the box next i will connect the green grounding terminal to this ground pigtail make sure it is not loose next i will connect the white neutral wires line wire goes on top this white neutral wire goes to the next outlet so i'll connect it at the bottom white neutrals are connected next the black hot wires the incoming black hot wire is connected to the line terminal which is on top this is the black hot wire connected to the load terminal let's take another look at the connections starting from ground this green ground wire is connected to the grounding terminal with the green screw on the gfci outlet this green wire is connected to the vago lever nut connector and this has all other ground wires this white neutral wire is the load wire going to the next outlet box and this white neutral wire is from the 42 wire which is the line or incoming power on this side the black hot wire with a yellow sticker is my line wire from this 42 it is connected to the line terminal on top this black hot wire is the load wire going to the next outlet box so all connections are good here i can push these wires a bit into the box next i will connect the other outlet starting with ground wires one ground wire from this 42 wire one ground pigtail from this metal outlet box and one ground pigtail which i will connect to the outlet i will use a 3 pin vago lever nut connector on the back side make sure the wires have been inserted all the way up to the top make sure no wire is loose i can push this into the box for now and i will keep this ground wire out ground connection first the white neutral wire to the silver screw on the left side and black hot wire to one of the brass screws on the right side 
push these wires a bit into the box. Tighten the extra screws. Tighten the extra screw on this side as well. One or two wraps of black tape around the terminals is good because I am using a metal box. This black tape around the terminals is to make sure that the line wire does not touch the metal box or the ground wire. I will now tighten these screws. I can tighten these screws as well. I will now turn on power and test both of these outlets. Power is on and you can see there is a small green indicator here. That means this outlet is on. I can use my client tools outlet tester to check all the outlets. These two orange lights indicate that the GFCI outlet is working. This one is also working. This outlet is also working. Let me check the top one. This is also working fine. Now let's see this outlet is protected or not. In case this outlet trips, I'll just press this test button here and this outlet is off now. There's no power in this outlet. To turn on the power, press the reset button and we have power here now. So we have seen that when this outlet trips due to some short circuit or some leakage of current, all the other outlets on the same circuit which are connected to this GFCI, they will also be turned off. So the benefit is that with one GFCI outlet, we can have two, three or four more normal outlets and they will all be protected. The cost of a GFCI is around $30 and the cost of a normal outlet is around $5. So instead of spending $30 on each of three or four GFCIs on the same circuit, we can have one GFCI and connect all others outlets to the first one. That will save a lot of cost. But here's a caution. The maximum capacity of this GFCI is 15 amperes. When you are connecting multiple outlets to the load terminal of one GFCI, make sure the total load is not more than 10 or 12 amperes. To be on safer side, I will not recommend more than two or three normal outlets connected to one GFCI. So this project is complete now. I hope the video is helpful. It is informative. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. There are many other similar DIY videos on my channel. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Until then, please take care.